What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. This is Dan from Headwaters Kayak, and behind me, I've got the new Kiowa 12 from Liquid Logic Kayaks, which is their brand new sit on top for 2023. It's very exciting to me because it's sort of a branch away from the wide, stable fishing kayaks that we've seen coming out from manufacturers. Liquid Logic's always been more of a recreational or river oriented company. So this kayak makes a lot of sense for their brand, and I think it makes a lot of sense for the market. Let's go take it for a paddle and I'll tell you my thoughts. Boy, it's pretty swampy. Wow, a lot of leg room. Six foot two and I've got, uh, I still have three more points of adjustment. I could go further if I wanted to, but this is about perfect. One thing I've been noticing lately when I'm putting people in kayaks is I notice a lot of people get in their boat and they try to like reach for their foot pedals. What I would encourage you to do is get in your boat, scoot your butt all the way back in the seat, nestle it in there, get your hip bone shoved in there. Then you can adjust your backrest forward and then adjust your foot pedals to you. Come on. There we go. And that's gonna help you engage good posture. Remember, when we're paddling, we wanna have an active paddling posture. We don't wanna be slouching back. Even if you're just relaxing, I mean, you can kick back and relax. But if you're trying to get somewhere, just sitting upright is gonna allow you to rotate and be so much more efficient on the water. So today our adventures have us back at a very familiar spot. I've actually shot a ton of YouTube videos here, but it's been a couple years. This is the beautiful Lake McCumber, which is right down the street from my family's cabin up here in Shingletown, California. I happened to be up visiting grandma this morning, so I decided to bring this boat and go for a little paddle. This is definitely one of my most happy places to be in a kayak. What a pleasant kayak to be in. <laughs> Only my first few strokes, but it's like, oh, this is it. I've been paddling a lot of fishing kayaks. Not that there's anything wrong with fishing kayaks, but it's nice to have good recreational options because a recreational person, they may want to fish, they may want to add a rod holder, they give you a little track for that. But really a recreational paddler is out here to get some exercise, to enjoy nature, and they want kayaking to be easy. And a lot of times fishing kayaks aren't easy. They might be stable, but they tend to be very slow in the water. They tend to be a lot more work to push through the water because they're all geared for standing up. They're geared for high seats. They're wide and extra capacity for bringing all that gear. So recreational kayaks tend to be a little bit sleeker and a little bit easier to paddle than fishing kayaks. And for years, our industry has gone so much towards fishing that even recreational kayaks have gotten wider and wider and slower and harder to paddle. So it's really refreshing to see a kayak like this. It's, you know, for recreational kayaks, a little bit narrower, a little bit sharper entry, definitely cruises through the water. Oh, wow. Nice. I just wanted to give it a little edge to see how it turns. And you can see just by shifting my weight to one side and pushing with this foot as I sweep. So I'm sweeping on the right side, pushing with my right foot. This boat spins right around, really responsive to my body English. The other thing I noticed about this boat is it tracks in a straight line. When I stop paddling, I'm not getting spun out, I'm not getting turned. Those are all things I'm looking for in a well-rounded paddle craft. Something that tracks well, but then when I give it a sweep stroke, something that comes around nice. And this kayak does that by having quite a bit of keel, but also a fairly wide stern. So it's a sharp bow and the kayak flares out into a wider stern, and then it's got a nice keel underneath. But what that does is it allows the boat to track, and when I put that edge in the water, the secondary stability, and sweep, it's using that outside curvature of the boat to carve a nice turn. So, and kudos to the designer. I don't know if Shane over at Liquid Logic designed this or somebody else, but really nice old design. It's kind of, Dare I say Crescent Kayak S? It's actually faster than a Crescent Kayak, but sort of a similar design ethos of efficient, simple, not a lot of bells and whistles, but just a really good paddling boat. I would say it's actually quite a bit faster than a light tackle too. 
doesn't push as much water, has a little sharper entry up there in the bow. Oh, family of honor, no way. was absolutely incredible. I just paddled with those guys right across the lake and they were just porpoising and following each other. There was probably five otters. So cool. The wildlife is what keeps me coming back to this lake because it's a small little PG&E lake. Not a lot of area to paddle, but man, is it gorgeous. We always see osprey, bald eagle, we've seen deer, river otters, beaver, um, sandhill cranes sometimes in the marshlands back here. Just a really unique ecosystem. And that was a good stability test too because I jumped forward to turn the camera around to hopefully catch those guys. We'll see how it came out. But uh, no issues at all with the stability. I mean, I can reach around. If I needed to grab something out of the bag, like I wanted to grab something out of my dry bag. Easy. In fact, if I, I want to keep this dry bag a little drier. I like this too. I can just tuck this in and stick it right up under here. That's kind of a cool deal. Anyway, I like that little compartment up there. It doesn't have interior storage uh, up front, which a lot of recreational kayaks would have a hatch up there, but more and more people are going to just wells that you can put a dry bag in. And I'm okay with that. If I was camping though, I would want to get my gear lower. You leave a lot of volume in the hull. Also, if waves come over the deck, it's nice to have a little bit more protection. So let's look at some details in the cockpit here. As we work our way back, you see it's got that nice mesh compartment in the front. I got my dry bag shove under there. It doesn't have internal storage there, but it does give you a nice well to put your gear in. This right here is a little dry storage. And look, that's actually a pretty nice dry storage. It's got a seal that goes all the way around it, similar to a dry box. And then you flip this and it locks it in place. Adjustable foot pedals. It comes standard with scupper plugs, but watch this. If I pull this out in my weight at 220 pounds that water's right at the scupper line so if i lean over one way i'm going to get water in right and if i edge back the other way that same water is going to drain right out which means i'm at the upper end of the capacity for this boat um you know ideally this boat's probably going to be for someone 200 and under i'm always perplexed why companies do that if it was just like this much higher it wouldn't be an issue it would have more volume and I would say normally they would do it because they don't want to raise the center of gravity. But look, I'm in a chair. I'm already a few inches off the deck. So why not bring my feet up? Even a half inch would make a big difference as far as volume to keep this boat dry. So, dang it. That's my first gripe about it. I, uh, I don't like a wet boat. And the first thing you're going to do is lose scuppers over time. And eventually you're going to have a wet cockpit, which is fine for summertime. You know, who cares if you have a little water sloshing around? But in the shoulder seasons, when you want to stay a little more drier, like today, I'm wearing socks, I want to have a nice dry deck. So I won't knock it too bad, but uh, I wish it was a little drier. Other little details here is it's got a little track. So if I wanted to add a rod holder, perfect spot right there in front of me. It's got a cup holder between my legs. And it's actually got a couple of nice storage compartments on either side. One here, one there that I can add things I want access to throughout the day. Additional cup holders in the back. Paddle clip on the side. And then a pretty decent sized tank well in the back there. So we're doing this review a little backwards today. Normally I put the boat on the stands and I talk all about the design and the features and whatnot. I decided today to just get straight to the water, get straight into the paddling. We'll talk about the details later. Because I realize so often in these reviews, people get hung up on the, you know, the Gucci features uh, and not necessarily on how the boat performs. And really, first and foremost, is how does this thing handle? How does it behave? Um, is it fast? Is it slow? That, that to me is more important. Also, the capacity, the stability, all those things are way more important than uh, where am I going to put my GPS and my GoPro and my USB charger. Uh, all that stuff can be figured out later, but first and foremost, the boat has to paddle well. You know, it's really been a while since I've hopped in a kayak like this to sit on top and thought I can really enjoy my paddle. Like, this is a perfect tool for out here today. Just a great flat water, even a little bit of chop this thing would handle. It's got decent speed, decent glide, super comfortable. Kind of everything I want in a 12 foot recreational sit on top. The secondary stability is really solid on it. So is the primary. It keeps like echoing back to that crescent light tackle, which I liked so much. 
The new LT2 is cool, but it's definitely it's gotten so heavy and it's gotten more fishing oriented. The, the LT2 is still a very cool kayak, but it's a little bit less of what I liked about that first light tackle. It's just so simple. It had everything you needed, nothing you didn't. And I like that about a kayak. It's simple and functional and relatively inexpensive, right? Because it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. That, that used to be $8.99. And this boat is, uh, I don't know. I forgot to look. I believe this boat's right at a thousand bucks, which in this market is pretty good, especially for a made in US kayak. These guys are all made right there in North Carolina at the Big Adventures factory. And Big Adventures is Liquid Logic, Native, Bonafide, uh, Hurricane. Although Hurricane's made in South Carolina, but it is the same folks that own it. Anyway, so it's neat to see an American made boat. It's fairly budget minded. On the panel. I'm making my way up Battle Creek, which is kind of fun. It's a narrow little creek that flows into Lake Macumber. Cool place to get out and explore. It's gotten so overgrown over the years. I used to be able to paddle way back in here, and every year it creeps in a little more, a little more. And then one year we'll have some crazy huge water year that'll blow it all out. Usually where I see the beavers back in here too. Oh uh, yeah, that's the end. End of the line for us. But I know a lot of you guys will ask me in the comments what paddle am I using today? Because this is kind of a new and different paddles, not my bending branches. Well, this is, this company's discontinued. These were handmade in Portland, Oregon. They are, uh, it's called a saltwood paddle, and they were a carbon fiber blade, balsa wood core, and then a CNC balsa bent shaft that then they glassed over the top. Just sort of a cool collector's item. I think they went out of business in like 2013 or, something like that but i've always kept this paddle around and today all my longer paddles were at the warehouse so i pulled this one out of the shelf this one's kind of one i just use when i'm paddling for myself you know i bust it out every now and again just because i like it so much and it deserves to be paddled kind of fun to have around i find myself getting more and more nostalgic as i do this longer and longer i suppose i should go without saying but sometimes in paddle sports like people get hung up on you know, who's paying the bills, who's giving me the most free stuff. Like I wanna make sure to show them the love because it really is. I mean, our sponsors are what makes all this work and companies like Liquid Logic sending me boats. I wouldn't have these boats without these companies. But at the same time, it's easy to lose track of paddling for yourself. And this year in particular, I've kind of got back on that track of just doing it for myself. Even with the videos, you know, we had Seth working with us for a year and uh, we decided this September that it was time to part ways. He was getting super busy with his video projects and I was having a harder time getting up to see him because I was working a bunch, traveling a bunch. And so I decided, I just kind of wanted to get back to doing it this way. Simple, I feel like I can record more, edit myself more, have a more real, frank conversation with people. So a little bit less produced, but hopefully a little bit more authentic. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comments. Do you like this style of video better? Or were you a fan of the uh, high production videos that we made with Seth? I'm definitely no videographer, I'm definitely no editor, but I do love paddling and I love sharing it with you guys. So now we're off the water, I wanted to give you guys a detailed look at the deck and the hull. It's a pretty simple little boat, you know, stern handle, a little tank well, a seat with a couple cup holders, paddle clip, another cup holder here, little storage cubbies on either side, grab handles on the side, a cool little dry box up in the front, and then the little mesh tank well in the front where I got my dry bag. The nice chair that's been used several times this summer as a camp chair. I've taken that out on different camping trips and used it. This has kind of been our family kick around. If friends want to borrow a boat, we let them have this one. It pretty much has fit everyone except for like real, real big guys. All of our friends and family that have tried it have had a great time and have had great things to say about it. And this is what makes it unique. Let's just look at that. Look at how sharp that entry is. Doesn't that have a throwback to the old ocean kayak days? 
if you're new to the sport, you might not remember, but there was old ocean kayak days when they had the uh, Trident, the Prowlers, the Scupper Pros. You know, those boats were all about performance, not necessarily so much about being ultra, ultra stable, but they paddled great. All right, let's flip this thing over and have a look at the hull. So once this boat's moving, that keel helps it track really, really well. It runs all the way from the bow, all the way into the stern, nice sharp entry. And then look at how deep that keel hangs out. And then again, what I was saying with that middle section being nice and wide, when you tilt this boat on an edge, so when you put that boat on an edge, it allows that keel to lift out of the water and kind of slide across the top of the water. Anyways, you guys can tell I'm pretty jazzed about the boat. Definitely stoked that I got to demo it. Thanks so much for Liquid Logic for sending it out. And thank you guys for watching. Hopefully it helps you out. Until next time, this is Dan wishing you happy paddling. We'll see you on the next one.